I think that Display Manager might be the worst possible name for any piece of software. What it is, is a login manager. I don't know why they're called Display Manager, but that's not really the point of today's video. The point I want to get at today is that I've noticed that when a lot of people first switch over to a window manager, they'll talk about trying to set up things like LightDM and GDDM as if they're things you actually need to have to actually start up your X server. Now this isn't to say that a display manager is completely pointless. If you want to have a really cool looking login screen, they do an absolutely fantastic job at that. But if all you want to do is log in and start up your X server and actually start using your system like you normally would, there is a much lighter way to do it. And that way is by using Xinit. Now, Xinit is basically a program which lets you manually start up your Xorg server. So you don't have to use anything like a display manager. You can just say, I want to start my X server, and then it just magically starts. So if you're on Arch Linux, what you do is you install a package called Xorg Xinit. Now, I don't know the name on other distros, but I presume it's named in a very similar way. But you can always go and search for Xinit, and you'll probably find what it's called in your standard repo. So I've already got it installed. And this actually comes with more than just Xinit. So we're not actually going to be running Xinit directly. What we're going to be doing is using a wrapper script called StartX, which comes in this package. And that's because most of what's defined inside of Xinit, you really don't need to worry about. So StartX is basically an interface which handles all of that. If you need to do something more advanced, Xinit is always there to use, but in this case, we're not going to bother touching it. Now, when we go and use Xinit or Start X, we need to go and define an Xinit RC. Now, by default, this is going to be located in your home directory and it's going to be a dot file, so dot Xinit RC. But I don't like it being in my home directory, so what I've gone and done is moved it into another folder. So I've moved it into my dot config directory into a folder called x11 and then in here it's just called xnit rc and then what i do is when i run start x i go and pass in the path to the file and then it just takes that file instead basically what this is, is a shell script to run every single time you start up your x server so this serves pretty much the same purpose as your x profile so you're going to be using it to launch up applications that rely on x and also the source files that really only make sense to source once you've actually started up your x server now as you can probably tell, I've got some things in here that probably shouldn't be in here. Things like my transmission daemon or MPD. I don't ever actually run my system from the TTY, but technically these should be getting started up somewhere else, like with system D or something like that. But I don't really care on my system. So ignoring those for just a moment, we also have things like dunce, my hockey daemon here. We have Udisky, X Banish. I'm changing my cursor. I'm sourcing my X mod map. All of this stuff is the same sort of stuff you do in your X profile, but there's one extra line in here that is very, very important. And if you don't have this, it won't start up your window manager or your desktop environment. That is the exec and then whatever you want to start. Just before that though, make sure everything before your exec command, you fork into the background. Even if you know it's something that's going to end very quickly like one of these, just fork it into the background by default. Because if you don't and you have something that doesn't end very quickly, like say Dunst, the rest of the file won't execute until that application is closed. So in that case, it's never going to start up your graphical environment. Okay, so the exec line is defined by whatever you want to launch. In the case of many window managers, it's just going to be exec, the name of the window manager. So exec i3, exec bspwm, exec dwm, things like that. But make sure you go and check the documentation because it might not always be that. Sometimes you might have to include some extra flags. Sometimes in the case of, say, GNOME, it's actually GNOME-session, and trying to just run GNOME isn't actually going to start it. So my suggestion is either check the documentation, or it might be easier just to go to the Arch Linux wiki, scroll down to the section that says starting with X in it, and then look at how it's done there. Now, even though for functionality's sake, it doesn't really matter that these four lines are in here, the important thing to keep in mind with this file is that the heavier the file is, the longer it's going to take to start up your X server. So if you had like a massive loop in here that fuzzy finded some files, and did a bunch of other stuff that really doesn't need to be running every time you start up your X server, it's going to take considerably longer to actually start it and considerably longer to get into your graphical environment. So anything that you want to auto start, Obviously, systemd is an option, but you could also go and start it in, say, your dot .profile, your dot .bash profile, or if you're on ZSH, your Z profile, or I 
fish. I'm going to assume it's like fish profile or something. Basically, just keep this file as light as possible and it will make your life much easier. Now, once that's written up, assuming that you're just sitting in your TTY, don't try to run this while you're actually in an X server. It will not end well for you. Assuming you're just in your TTY, if you've just got your X and RC in your home directory, all you would do is run start X. And if you're trying to pass a file into it, all you do is just pass a file into it and then it will do exactly as you expect it to do. And that one right there. And that's all you have to do. Every time you log in, you just run this command and it just starts up your X server. No problem whatsoever. But I don't really like having to write start X. I'm very lazy and I just want to have it so every time I log in, it just automatically starts on my server. So there's a very simple way we can go and do that. Okay, so the file we use is going to depend on what our default shell is. So in my case, that's going to be my Z profile. And what we're going to do is add in this very, very simple if statement. So if you didn't know, there's actually a little program that you have on your system called TTY. And that will tell you which TTY you're currently in. So in this case, I'm in slash dev slash PTS slash six. Now, what we're basically doing is checking if my TTY currently equals slash dev slash TTY1, which when you first log in, if you don't bother switching your TTY, is going to be the default one that you open up into. So once you've logged in, this file will get run straight away. So what we're doing is just checking if we're on TTY1 and then checking if I've got my window manager already open. And if I don't have my window manager open, pretty much all I do is just run start X and then pass in the path to the file. And it just magically starts on my X server. I never need to actually worry about it. The reason the if statement is very important is because if you need to switch over to a different TTY because you're having problems with your X server, you don't want to have it so it automatically starts up another X server when you don't know why your first isn't working. So I would recommend just having it running on your main TTY and then letting your other ones be there for debugging. Now, if you're the sort of person who likes to run multiple graphical environments, it's not like you're actually stuck here because writing a very simple script that says, okay, if you select choice A, run choice A. If you select choice B, run choice B takes about two minutes to do. And there's probably already tools to do a selector like that anyway. So that's not really an issue. So what you would do is just to find multiple versions of your XNRC. So you'd have one for say BSPWM, one for DWM, one for KDE, so on and so forth. And that's another benefit of not defining it in your home directory because if we're just passing in the file, there's nothing stopping us just defining extra files. Now, a display manager is probably completely fine to run most of the time, but from what I've seen, there's a lot of people online who will talk about how their display manager just stopped working after some sort of update. So it seems like it's just an extra failure point. Like they updated their NVIDIA driver and then LightDM just stopped working or they installed some new software and then LightDM just wouldn't start up the X server. I'm not just picking on LightDM here. That's just the first one that's coming to mind. But this is true for every single display manager out there. So for me, I just want starting on my X server to be as simple as possible. So hopefully that helps out someone who's new to doing their own thing on Linux and makes you realize that there's more out there than just running the display manager. It's not like that's the only choice you actually have. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinion, Andrew, Nathan, Montala, Will, Chica, Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Pitity, Road. Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 patrons. If you want to go and support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, to our pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.